Hey everyone, this is a mob farm. This is also a mob farm, and this is also a mob farm. Today we're talking about mob farms, and the three I just showed you were from some of my survival worlds. I use the same design every time because it's simple, it's efficient, and it does exactly what I need it to do. And that's generally the philosophy behind designing a mob farm. Simple and efficiency, or just efficiency if that's what you're into. But as a person who designs various things that are usually never practical, these aren't really things that I consider. So what if it wasn't simple, and what if it wasn't efficient? What if we made it a whole lot worse? So with this moderately questionable goal, I did it. I designed one of the most horrible and worthless farms ever designed. I took the grand advent of mob farming, and I made it so much worse. So first let's talk about actual mob farming and how it works. Generally, we use water to flush things away from the center of a platform that's usually diamond shaped because that's how water flows. We're going to be farming creepers, so sometimes you might use cats to scare them in a certain direction or something. But in order to make a worse mob farm, we want to cast aside all of these inventions that the community has deemed to be useful and use something less useful. And we're going to be using skeletons. So the general idea I walked into this with was to use the power of skeletons equipped with punch two arrows to launch creepers around off of platforms, presumably into killing chambers. But the problem with that is that I need the skeleton to shoot a target which stands behind the creeper in order to get it to hit it. And that becomes quite cumbersome considering we also need a pit here for the creeper to fall into and it's a lot of wasted space. So instead, we're going to get the skeletons to shoot their arrows onto slime block contraptions, which will then launch the arrows at the creepers. And with this simple setup, we can actually get a lot of mileage out of a single arrow. It'll fire this entire distance, and if we put a creeper here, even at the farthest back spot, we can launch it the whole way. So how exactly do we capture these arrows? So if you look at the system right here that I developed, it looks pretty complicated, but it's very simple. We have a skeleton here, iron golem here. Skeleton tries to shoot its arrows at the iron golem, gets slowed down by this water in this chamber here, and it falls through this gap right into this column of blocks, or this row. And the reason why the setup is so convoluted is to stop the problem of skeletons looking across to their neighbor and shooting at this iron golem over here, for example. Because that causes the arrows to kind of go awry and they fall like on here or like down there. And that's just something we want to prevent. So the skeleton can only see its specific iron golem through this tiny, tiny gap in the mud and the glass. And now that I've turned the machine on, these gates are open, meaning that these skeletons are firing at these iron golems and they're all falling straight down here. If we take a look back at the initial setup, it might seem initially like we can only use one skeleton per lane or a slime block. And this is going to be very cumbersome because we can't get a lot of mileage out of skeletons, especially since they'll be causing a lot of lag if we have to store a ton of them, one for each lane, not to mention the fact that each one also comes with its own iron golem, which is even more lag. So we want each skeleton to be in charge of managing multiple lanes, not just one. Okay, so it turns out this convoluted idea of getting skeletons to clear multiple lanes at once is pretty complicated, as you can see here. But what we're doing here is having these multiple shelves of slime, which will all get loaded at different intervals, such that they all get a dose of arrows. Then they begin to get launched to fire and clear up these layers a little bit at a time of creepers. And in order to not waste time, we're actually loading on the other side while that side is firing meaning that by the time this is ready to be loaded again, this side can fire as well. But wait, what the hell is even going on here? How does any of this even work? Like, how do you even begin to wire up a system like this? The solution to this problem is this thing. It's a ternary counter, which means that it counts from 1 to 2 to 3, or 0, 1, 2 if you like. And this is really helpful, because it means that we can count our three layers, one after the other, but this doesn't help us with the other problem, which is counting in reverse. And the answer is simply have two of these, but one of them goes in reverse. And the reason this works, as you can see this one travels to the left, but this one travels to the right, is because it changes based on where we power it from. Because in this game, 
I don't know, this is kind of weird. This is, but I didn't code it. These rails get updated, meaning they realize they're powered from the order of the farthest to the nearest of the power source. So when I power this, this is the first to realize it's powered, then this, then this, then this. And we can see this visually here with this setup. Only one of these pistons can extend, and it'll always be the one farthest from the spot we power it, because it's the first rail to update and is prioritized. We use this system here. If we look, we have these two counters, and both of these are the same setup over there, except we just swap between them every time we want to swap between shooting and reloading. Okay, so I shouldn't have to say this, but this farm sucks, you should never build it ever. Because number one, it's way too complex, look at all this componentry. It's poorly designed, once again, look at all this componentry. It's stupidly difficult to make, because where are you even getting all of these skeletons with punch two bows? And lastly, it just sucks. It's inefficient. It doesn't do anything well. And it might look like you're getting a lot of creepers, maybe more than the mob farm that you've constructed, but that's just because we're at Y-64, and mobs literally have no choice but to spawn inside the farm or on my properly spawn improperly spawn-proofed component tree, which also exists inside the farm. Another reason why you shouldn't build it. Anyways... Another note is that it's actually kind of no pressure at all to build a farm like this because the reality is is that when you're normally designing a farm, you're looking for efficiency. You want to see things being produced as fast as possible and when they aren't, then that's a huge letdown. But here, when things are absolutely terrible, I've actually done a great job because my intent here is to make it as terrible as possible and to design the worst farm in existence. Anyways, that'll be at the end of the video today. I'll post a light manica if you want the mob farm. I don't know why you'd want it, and I'm definitely never, ever, ever making a tutorial on it because, well, you couldn't force me to under my own life. If you want an actual mob farm design, I recommend checking out ENXO4's video on it. It's basically just this farm with the con same concept, except just better because it's easier to build. Anyways, that'll be it for today, and I'll see you next time.